place for lonely hearts to find It's where I wait for you I'm gonna stay until the end has come And make my peace with you Maybe this is just an old deceit Maybe it's the truth Hello, everybody. Um, we are live from Poznan. Um, welcome. My name is Enrico Bannucci, and I'm your host for today's panel called Let's Get Critical. Let's Get Critical is brought to you by Glasgow Show Film Festival and Shore Waves uh, Festival in Poznan. The panel is promoted in collaboration with Talking Shorts, an online film magazine dedicated to short films whose goal is to make shorts more visible and to create a wider discourse about the art form. This panel is also part of the Be Short Now initiative. The Be Short Now initiative aims to tackle and investigate distinctive topics peculiar of the short film industry and to share the knowledge with the largest audience possible, making these information available on internet for free in the form of video recordings and audio podcasts. The Be Short Now initiative is promoted by Talking Shorts and can be consulted at talkingshorts.com. Today's panel aims to explore the current state of short film criticism in terms of accessibility and opportunities. In order to do so, we have invited three very distinguished guests who I'm going to present in alphabetical order. I'm very happy to welcome Marina Di Richter. Uh, she's a film critic and editor in chief of the online magazine Ubiquarian, and moreover, She's a film programmer for Neuchatel International Fantastic Film Festival, and she's from Austria. Welcome, Marina. Thank you. Um, second is Julian Ross. Uh, you won't see him today because he's connecting by phone, but he's here with us. Uh, he's a curator and programmer for Locarno Film Festival and International Film Festival Rotterdam, and he is from the Netherlands. Welcome, Julian. Thank you. And finally, last but not least, uh, Laura Valde, uh, curator working for International Kurzfilm Tage Winterthur and PhD student researching the short film ecosystem at the Zurich University. And she's from Switzerland. Welcome, Laura. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us, Enrico. Um, so we have a lot of questions today uh, that we have prepared already. And so I want to start immediately. Uh, at the end of the session, if you want, uh, the audience can write uh, some, some questions and then we can uh, address those at the end of, of the talk. The talk will be more or less one hour. Um, so let's start immediately with a basic simple question, which is what is the main purpose of criticism? And in particular, I would like to know if you could address if is it only goal to educate or should it also stimulate the public to discover or should it merely stimulate discourse? Marina, would you start with this? Well, I think it's the combination of everything. Uh, it depends on uh, which audience you target. Of course, uh, you need something of academic um, you know, thoughts uh, if you want to educate new generations of filmmakers or, you know, writers as well. On the other hand, um, you know, if you want to reach a wider audience, which doesn't come from, from the academic position, and doesn't come necessarily from this film business, um, then, uh, you know, you don't just educate, uh, you are trying to uh, raise curiosity and to attract a wider audience to go and discover new new filmmakers and new films. Um, Julian, what your take on this? Okay, can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, uh, so I think at this stage right now, short film criticism. Excuse me. That's the wind. Uh, um, the short film criticism as it exists at the moment is mainly advocation, and um, in hope that people discover uh, short films that are mainly underrepresented in um, film viewing, film viewing experiences today. Um, but what I hope we can move into is um, short film criticism that engages in debate. Um, I hope short film criticism just becomes part of film criticism and intervenes into the uh, kind of larger ecosystem, let's say, of uh, film criticism, and is discussed in tandem with feature films, mid-length films, etc. cetera. Um, I see that done much more often in um, uh, art writing, so art criticism. Um, short films are just treated as works, and in that way, they're able to engage um, via discussions of themes or, you know, stylistic decisions or um, ethical considerations, especially for documentaries, etc., cetera, um, alongside, you know, feature films or even other artworks. And I, I would hope that uh, short film criticism moves into that stage. Otherwise, I think it's just going to stay on its own island. And, I mean, there are its advantages for that, um, especially for... Um, not, not so much criticism, I think, but for, um, um, let's say, festivals or programming. Um, because film, I think the film experience of short film compilation programs is a very different thing to presenting a short film. But in, in the realm of criticism, I think it would be great for short, film, short films to be discussed alongside feature films in tandem for it to enter a new stage. Okay. Thank you so much. And Laura? Yeah, um, thank you, Julian, for uh, your comment just now. Um, that um, kind of uh, speaks for me as well. What, uh, th this is maybe just uh, something that I'm, I'm hoping for, and maybe it's a slightly ideological or romantic notion of criticism. But um, what I would wish for um, from criticism is that it's um, kind of related to, to the specific uh, historical, political, social conditions that we're experiencing and that the criticism in itself is also kind of uh, an art form in the sense of that it becomes a companion piece to the films that it discusses. Um, so that it's not, I mean, we know um, kind of, the, the sort of criticism that we used to read, at least in the newspapers, I mean, that's going down, uh, obviously, as well now, where it's more uh, a criticism in the sense of, uh, I like this, I don't like that, go see this, don't go see that. So it's more like a shopping guide. And I don't think that this is the kind of criticism, obviously, that we're uh, talking about or that we are um, looking for. Um, for short films also um, because the question of access to short films is I think something that we will um, come back to during the panel repeatedly um, because especially for newer works the question of accessibility is huge um, because if you compare it to feature films that still do get a uh, theatrical release or at least go online quite soon um, the discussion is obviously different in the sense of that you can really um, advise people in what is what's new out there and what they could go see. With short films, I feel um, the question of where are you actually going to see what the critics are writing about is is fundamental, and we should always kind of keep that in mind um, when writing short film criticism as well. I think it's also one of the reasons why uh, it's so difficult to write about short films also in the academic context, because it's so hard to actually access the films for the, for the audience to actually see what uh, critics are writing about. Um, thank you, Laura. Um, actually, your um, answer uh, drives me to a question that I've prepared already um, for later, but I would like now to address it right now since you raised it. And the question is, as the rise of streaming platforms over the past couple of years increased the, quant the quantity of writing about short films, and does more short film distribution equal better criticism? What do you think?
I'm, I'm, may I may I start? Um, yeah. Well, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the increased um, kind of streaming possibilities have also increased the number of uh, short film reviews. I, I don't see that happening that that much. Um, you know, there were some attempts, but not specifically like in, in the case of um, Talking Shorts or in the case of Cubiquarian that somebody actually dedicated their full time to, to actually write about short films. Um, I'm not sure, um, you know, if this is necessarily connected, uh, but one thing is certain, you know, with the increasing uh, streaming possibilities that we're having everywhere right now and with the possibility of the audience also of buying uh digital passes and whatever you know you can actually uh recommend the films um not in the sense as laura addressed you know or like or like this or like that you know go shopping but in the sense of you know pay attention to this work for for this particular reason you know i think that the audience has a chance through this film criticism to go and purchase the passes you know go and like press the press that button you know to actually make an effort and discover something new and see that um, Laura? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree in, um, with Marina that um, streaming platforms give us uh, more access to these short films and that then it becomes uh, a, a vital task of criticism to actually pinpoint to highlights because, um, I mean, obviously, the um, the kind of danger with uh, having so much more material online is that you then also get easily lost, right? And maybe not even start watching uh, watching anything new because you're simply overwhelmed by all the material out there. I mean, I, I, I even we experience that. I think I'm all, always also happy when people actually. Um, tell me what they've uh, discovered newly and then I go specifically uh, look for that. Um, still, I mean, I think it would be interesting to talk about ideas for, uh, for kind of curated platforms specifically for short films or what is already out there and what we could maybe expand on that because it's still a little bit the case that um, discovering new material is mostly possible during a festival, um, like right now, for example, we can all experience and enjoy the programming of Poznan or of Glasgow Short Film Festival, we can buy passes, but once the festival is over, um, where uh, or am I actually going to, to see that film? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh if you're lucky, I don't know, if somewhere on the internet, probably. Uh, Julian, what's your take on this? Yeah, I agree with Laura in the sense that, I mean, if you think it's difficult to get attention for short films in the cinema, I think it's as difficult, if not much more difficult, to get the same kind of attention in the on the internet, where there's so much possibilities out there. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, I, I do see an increased at least visibility of short film online. Um, uh, for example, even on Netflix, um, you know, you have a short film by David Lynch, um, I forget what it's called, but one with the monkey. Um, this, I mean, because it's David Lynch, it gets reviewed in the Guardian, like a, you know, uh, a newspaper, um, despite uh, its length. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it would be good for, um, these platforms or critics themselves to push for more space of short film criticism. Um, because, you know, it, it's not just, uh, you know, David Lynch or Jonathan Glazer's small curiosities, short films that, um, you know, should be getting the attention. And I look at platforms like Mubi where short films are treated like feature films the same way. You know, you get the same size still, same length synopsis, perhaps a write-up by uh, somebody writing a notebook, a critic. Um, yeah, and, and I see possibilities there. And, um, you know, I think movie releases got more attention, um, at least in the UK, uh, when uh, they presented online releases. Um, those films started getting reviews, um, but not the short films. So I think it's time for critics themselves to pitch these short films um, 
uh, as something they want to advocate and write about and discuss with a broader public. Um, yeah. And I do want to say also, in terms of like curating platforms for short films, I see um, possibilities in uh, places like V-Drum and uh, the Cinema Club. Um, I think both those platforms understand that um, perhaps the online experience of short film doesn't have to be a compilation program, but just one film and have an interview with the maker or a write-up to engage with that one short film. Um, and, you know, I think v is bi-weekly, the Cinema Club is every week. I'm sure um, you have other examples in mind, but those are the ones that I regularly follow, um, where I feel there's, you know, space uh, for each work um, given to breathe. Um, I totally understand the compilation program is a format that's necessary for um, a cinema screening. Uh, because it's hard to get people to buy a ticket for one, you know, 20 minute film and then, oh, please leave the theater after the lights go on. That's, yeah, kind of difficult. But um, online doesn't have, sorry, I'll, sorry, it's very windy here. <laughs> online doesn't have that restriction. It's, um, you know, so rather than um, presenting like multiple shorts per day for people to follow, I don't know about you, but I was overwhelmed in the beginning of the uh, lockdown period in March when, um, you know, I was trying to follow all these films that are going online for brief periods or, you know, unknown periods, trying to catch up with everything. And it was quite overwhelming. Um, but to be have a kind of patient kind of programming for the online space, perhaps, um, uh, you know, short film criticism and discussion would grow. Um, I'll be slower, but uh, yeah, in a more kind of expansive way. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I have another question now, um, and um, the question is, who is short film criticism for? Uh, the audience, the filmmakers, uh, what do you think? Julian, will you start? Yeah, sure. Um, I think right now, short film criticism is for the um, filmmaker, the writer, and the festival. Um, and not so much the reader as much. And I think, uh, as I've said before, it would be good to um, go past that stage of like sharing and this, you know, uh, suggesting to readers and getting them to engage with films that they've seen before. Um, so, um, you know, so discussing a feature film alongside a short film is one way of doing that, as I've said before. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I understand I, at the moment, um, saying that, I think, you know, too much of um, short film and the determinants of its success is dependent on prizes that it's won or the festival run that it's had. And, um, you know, I'm sorry to say, I think that's too limiting. Um, it, it should involve uh, critics' opinions and, um, you know, broader discussion on the film as well, not just like X number of festivals it's been to or, you know, prizes it's won, because in the end, we all know a prize is just, you know, three people maybe uh, is, um, happen to choose that one out of 20 titles or something. It shouldn't be so heavily weighted on um, jury decisions. And um, also, you know, the film festival run runs, I mean, many films deserve these festival runs, but we all know that, um, you know, this is dependent on, let's say, you know, the visibility of its first or second uh, premiere kind of spots and, um, you know, its distributor doing a good job or, uh, you know, um, that kind of thing. It's, it's not so, uh, how do I put it? Um, you know, it shouldn't be the only way a short film is deemed successful. And I think one, one way of opening up a new avenue for that is criticism. Um, um, you know, we all know feature films that have like bombed in the box office or just wasn't really critically acclaimed, but one or two film critics praised it uh, uh, then or a few years later, and now it's become like a canon work. Um, this possibility should also be available for, for short films. Um, yeah, so at the moment, I think it's mainly for the writer, the festival, and the filmmaker. Sorry, it's really storming out here. <laughs> um, but I think we can move on to a criticism that's also for um, a broader discussion and engagement, and especially the readers. As, as Laura mentioned before as well, it's, uh, it's too often the case that the reader of a short film criticism piece has not 
seen the film yet. Um, and this is also because of the emphasis on premieres for writers and outlets and things. So, um, you know, even if a writer picks up the short film competition um, at a festival and writes about it, if it's a, if it's a premiere, um, that film is not going to be seen by basically all of those readers except those who are at that festival. So it would be good to find new ways of visibility and accessibility uh, for short films so the readers can actually, you know, discuss themselves internally at least when they're reading the piece um, is that the opinion I had when I watched this film or not? Okay, thank you, Julian. Um, Marina, uh, who do you write for at Ubiquarian? Well, you know, <clears throat> it started as some kind of personal wish to step away from the things that I've always written about. As like uh, when you go to the big international film festivals, everybody's on about the main competition, about feature films and whatever. And at one point I caught myself running away from those competitions and ended up watching shorts, which really made me much more relaxed and much more focused in so many levels. Because I noticed one thing, you know, one difference between these uh, two ways of programming, um, like competitions is that there was so much more attention put into the short films and it was a, it was my very personal discovery that um, I just wanted to go and explore more of that and I'd not just stick to the same old same old which becomes boring in, in, in a way. Uh, so what we're doing, uh, the way we started, I mean I initiated that but it's actually three of us who are um, you know taking care of Ubiquarian and now we have a huge team, was that I go to places that People usually do not explore because there are some genre which which are very kind of looked upon with high eyebrows, you know, it's like, oh, genre, genre short films. So I started there and then I started going more and more into the sidebars. Um, so my interest was at the beginning a really small, unexplored uh, sections of the short uh, filmmaking. I mean, in terms of film criticism, and then I was expanding more and more. And now literally, um, the only uh, parameter in selecting what we're writing about is something that you, you, either made us very curious in a positive sense or something that was really so bad it was like really uh, interesting to, to look at. Uh, so we don't have the agenda, um, um, like what, what uh, Julian addressed at one point. Um, you know, we don't actually do the recap of who are the winners and it's like doing the winner films, just really seriously looking through the program, watching films very attentively and then um, like hand picking uh, what we think uh, is in one or the other way interesting to, to be um, spoken about and written about. And then there is another, uh, which is, um, um, a column uh, which is written by Tara Judah. Um, it's uh, bi-monthly reflections, uh, which I really think it's, it's very interesting as a concept. Um, it's just literally reflecting uh, on films you watch, not particularly writing about one single film, but making all the connections of what this thing, uh, what this film does to you. And where do you see it's connections to the outside world, maybe it's something you read about, maybe something you experienced, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Uh, Laura? Can, can I actually just ask a follow-up question to Marina? Yeah, go <laughs> yeah. on. So um, interesting what you're saying, and um, because I don't, I don't know if Julian actually writes film criticism, because I, I mean, I, um, you said it, uh, Enrico, I come more from the academic uh, context. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a film critic, um, really not. Um, um, what I was wondering, do you actually think that a, uh, because I, uh, I realized how the first question was about film criticism per se, and now we're talking <laughs> about short film criticism. So I was wondering, do you actually think that a, um, a critique of a short film or, or criticism uh, has to be written differently? And, and if yes, because uh, of accessibility, because you cannot presume any familiarity of uh, the audience with the filmmaker or because it's uh, not, it doesn't have any commercial value or 
or is it actually the same? Doesn't it matter? Well, um, well, literally, we're talking about the very, very, very um, a wide concept of film criticism. Uh, you know, people who are reviewing feature films, you know, it's uh, let's say seventy-five percent of them will never reach the cinemas. If you go to the big festivals and you are doing the art house cinema or documentaries or whatever, so there are really small chances that these films are going to actually hit the cinemas in such a big way than huge commercial hits, such as, I don't know, like a, a Star Wars franchise or whatever. So in that sense, it's not really that much different. Uh, when, you, when you are at the festival on uh, the streaming platforms, which also represent festivals, um, you literally uh, write about things that you find inspiring and they're out there. And uh, there isn't much difference also in the word count or whatever, because if you want to analyze uh, one particular film, you dedicate your energy to it. So it's not even about the word count or about the form, because like, as we know, uh, to make a good short film, it takes um, most probably, I don't know, cut me short if I'm wrong, but uh, much more, skills to compress uh, one very complex story into a short format than to stretch it over two hours. So it, it has all there. I mean, it, it, it has all its um, cinematographic values, um, like not just a script writing, directing, but it was like sound department and everything around. So I don't think it's really that much different to, to write about one thing or the other, or it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And how would you reply to this question, Laura, your own question? I also don't, um, I also wouldn't have expected uh, Marina to tell me that it's a, it's a huge difference, uh, a huge difference. Um, I just realized that um, in the academic context, uh, working on short films, I have to say the experience is quite different. Um, for example, when I'm at, and I mean, you've been uh, in this situation as well, Enrico, maybe you can even also say a few words about this. I just realize uh, how unfamiliar uh, the format is for, um, for short film scholars and how I need so much time, um, usually when, or, or word, words when writing an article to contextualize. Um, because okay. I cannot uh, assume any kind of familiarity and uh, because it's always this kind of special case. So I actually, um, that makes my texts or my presentations, I guess, longer in the end, which is always kind of paradoxical because I'm writing <laughs> about short film. Um, but this is uh, maybe another topic that we will uh, discuss about later, the whole idea of the canon, which yep. uh, for mm -hmm. short film clearly lacks and which at least in the academic context, I do experience kind of as a challenge because I also cannot refer to, to films that I can just assume everybody has seen. As I can, for example, in the, when I talk to, to people in the short film industry, when I talk to you guys, uh, like there's just um, lots of works that I could refer to and then kind of analyze or make a point. Um, and I, I will assume that you have seen these works because you're in the same kind of industry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, I totally agree. Um, no, no, uh, Maria, go on, please. Now, just say that, you know, in a way, uh, I hear you and I totally, I, I, I love uh, what you said about how difficult it is, it is to go right and be uh, without uh, references and all that. But I think that sometimes it's, that's exactly the challenge and the beauty of it. You know, when you actually write about a film without having to refer to anything, it's just like, um, like presented as like a unique piece of something, you know, that stands alone there. Um, you know, I think it's it's difference uh, between writing the academic work um, and also what we do because you have to go and dig very deep because like you are an archaeolo archaeologist of of, uh, of the of, of films. Um, in 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 my case, I sometimes have to bite myself on the tongue as like a go and say like, you know, you just stay clear of comparisons. You just go and try to push this thing, up, you know, in front as something completely, you know, a long standing. 
Um, since Laura, you already uh, start briefly talking about uh, the canon, I would now concentrate on that specific question, which is um, can the concretization of short term canon nurture more public education? Would an established canon help future short film critics? What do you think? Laura, can we can you start since I think you are the right person? Hey, can I can I just uh, jump in with the oh. previous question before we uh Yeah, um, okay. yeah, just, sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So just to mention, I think um for feature film critics it's a challenge for them to write about short films. Um I think they're often lost uh at what to do, mainly because they're so reliant on narrative. Um, especially newspaper critics are just writing about, you know, um, often about the storyline and maybe one or two lines at the end about formal decisions and things like that. Whereas short films is, is a bit confronting for them, perhaps, because it's often a slice of life or a moment or, you know, it has a different type of um, narrative arc or duration to, you know, like a feature film. And they're kind of lost of what to do. They use, they're so used to filling the work out with um, just plot points that they don't really know how to engage with it and um, find an entry point. So I think we need to find, challenge these writers to um, to engage with this kind of cinema uh, and stop doing what they're so used to doing and churning out these film reviews every every week. Um, and, you know, there's many ways we can do that. For example, one thing I've noticed is that um, there's all these kind of young critics programs across different film festivals around the world, which is really wonderful. But I think if you look at how, you know, what the writing, you know, what kind of writing is done in, in these kind of academies, you see that a lot of them are focusing on feature film. And I think it's good to challenge them early on to say, OK, like now you've got to write about short film, um, you know, good luck. And you can't use reference points um, to, you know, feature films that everybody knows. Let's see what you come up with, um, mm -hmm. because it's, yeah. Uh, I think uh, that kind of, uh, I think we need to challenge um, film readers to write short film criticism because they're probably not able to do it. And that's how I think film criticism more broadly can expand beyond uh, such heavy reliance on narrative and plot points and things like that, which is, um, you know, just one part of many things in cinema. Uh, thank so, you, Jim. Um, uh, yeah, I, sorry I, to interrupt. You can no, no, move no, on no, to the it, canon question. It, it was, <laughs> no, it was perfect, actually, you know, because I was thinking that probably it's not the problem or only of uh, criticism, shopping criticism, but I mean, I'm thinking about also film students in, in, in academies where usually they are required to uh, make short films, but mostly they watch feature films and, and so on. So mm. it's like it just, it, it's a broader. Uh, issue, let's say, with short films in general, not only criticism, but I mean, I totally agree with what you said. Mm. Um, and that's also interesting. Can I, can I jump into that as well? Oh, yeah. sorry. No, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll just say, I think in education, short film is a godsend because, you know, when you ask people to watch a feature film, it requires time. And usually that means outside of the classroom space, right? <laughs> Unless you organize a screening. Whereas if you use a short film, you can watch it together and engage with it immediately afterwards. Um, I find that in my teaching, short film discussions are way more engaging because everybody's just watched that at the same time. So there's that immediacy, the urgency. Um, and I think it's, it's not because of the format that um, uh, we don't see short films in education. It's just the, uh, you know, lazy teaching, basically. The teachers don't know. They're too reliant on DVD releases, theatrical releases you know, film reviews and big magazines to construct their history and canon. So they don't know these short films. That's why they're not teaching it. But mm -hmm. pedagogically speaking, short films are very useful for teaching in a classroom environment because you can watch it together and engage with it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, I think, you know, we say the historical canon doesn't include short film. That might be true for some kind of films. So, uh, I'm sorry, but for avant-garde film and experimental film, if anything, okay. um, feature films are the ones that are missing in, uh, in, in the canon. So if you think of, you know, avant-garde films from the 20s and 30s or experimental films in the 60s and 70s, in my teaching, I'm mostly teaching on um, short films. And that's because the canon works are all short works. 
And that was because of various things, um, you know, the context in which they were made, um, you know, perhaps short f- uh, feature films require more budget and a uh, kind yeah. of system and infrastructure studio to support them to make these things and avant-garde films not part of that kind of thing. So, you know, I think it's just um, from where the, pers- you know, from the perspective you come at it, I think short film is part of the historical canon if you look at avant-garde film. And I, I certainly think it should be part of education because it gives that opportunity of engagement that maybe feature film struggles to do. Mm. Uh, you know, may I also jump in? I think uh, that there is one problem related to this kind of misconception of what short film is. As like, <clears throat> usually, you know, people have this kind of really wrong idea that the short film is just an exercise for a feature film one day. And I think that's something, you know, we we really need to discuss more about in the future as well, because, you know, I think that the huge majority of people has this very wrong idea about what short film actually is. Um, Laura, you were saying something before? Um, Yeah, I I wanted to, to jump in and that actually also connects with what you then afterwards said, Julian, about, um, you know, this reliance of um, film critics basically on, let's say, straightforwardly told narrative uh, films basically, and then struggling with with, uh, with how short film uh, or how due to its brevity, that's what I mostly actually work on uh, in my PhD is the concept of brevity and what you can then do with that. Um, how that changes uh, storytelling or could change potentially storytelling and um, experimentation basically with cinematic language. Um, that I just, what something that I notice frequently is that when I read um, criticism uh, on short films, it's often by people who do not have a background in cinema or cinema studies, but come more from the art world. And I think that's probably the explanation. Um, because they're just so much more used to this kind of um, of artwork or this, uh, they, they don't rely that much on narrative. And that uh, goes, kind of ties in with what you then later said with uh, the absolutely true uh, fact that uh, at least avant-garde filmmaking is part of the canon, but it's just from my experience, uh, coming from a very classical film studies background, this is still kind of treated differently. You know, it's film, but uh, it's art, and uh, it automatically gets put into this uh, kind of niche or ghetto almost. So on the one hand, you have film history and on the other hand, you have art that is also film. And I mean, what I would really love to see in the future is that we find a way um, to establish a, a, a canon that is actually just film and that does not make this uh, distinction anymore um, between different forms of approaching the medium. And that would also automatically kind of get rid of this distinction even between, uh, that's what we met, was mentioned before as well. Why do we have to distinguish between, between feature film and short film and mid-length and whatever? So I think that all ties in together a little bit. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, I will ask you another question now. Um, uh, regarding criticism as a mixture of opinion, analysis, and debate. Um, which one of these three is more important in the context of show films for you? Uh, Marina? Well, I mean, opinion, that's one thing. You know, I observed um, like a tendency that uh, there are many people right now writing in I form, which for me is something that I immediately skipped on reading because um, I don't like this uh, when when the film um, criticism turns into very personal kind of opinion thing. I mean, of course, we all have our opinions about a film, but I think it should be more about debate, Um, you know, but in in terms of if you're writing to a broader audience that not necessarily come from the filmic background, you know, then it's more about a very discreet combination of everything 
without necessarily uh, very much opinions, uh, thoughts about it. I mean, it, it, it seriously, you know, as we, as we address all these things, I mean, one thing is to, to be writing for people who know much about the film, and the other thing is to, to, to write for everybody, so to speak, without turning it into to some kind of commercial salad, you know, some fast food mm -hmm. snack. So I don't know if I could really uh, formulate that all well, but I mean, um, it, it really depends uh, who are you writing for. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we need academia, we need lots of debating, we need um, like to discuss about films more. I can just, you know, agree with, with Laura and Julian. On the other hand, if you want to uh, attract new audiences, if you want to make it more accessible to everybody, then you have to write in such language that everybody is capable of understanding without turning it into something ridiculous and too easy and something you read um, lately in many okay. online. Uh, Julian? Hello? Um, yeah, you can hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Yeah, um, for me, all of it's important because there's not enough of it, but I think I would like to see more debate, as, I, as I've been saying, and maybe analysis, because um, too often I see short films criticism in the form of a festival report when there's like maybe three lines per film or something where it basically goes down to, this is kind of what it is, it's good or bad, you know? I'm kind of being um, a bit mean here, maybe very reductive, but it's just, um, uh, you know, I totally understand. I mean, even when I, even the fact that it exists, even those three lines is very important uh, for me as a short film programmer, for a short filmmaker and for the festival. But I think we do need to find ways to go beyond that and engage in discussion and debate. and. Um, so for me, um, right now, I see a lot of opinion and that's uh, greatly appreciated, but I really want to see more analysis, more debate. Uh, and that means um, outlets, uh, magazines or online spaces are providing that platform um, to engage in short film criticism on that level and inviting reviewers and film critics to discuss in that level on um, these short films. So yeah, I think debate would elevate uh, the fear of short film criticism to something that we don't quite see at the moment. Um, don't you think that analysis is more probably an academic approach? Are you, are you asking me? Yeah, or yeah, and Laura as yeah. well? Um, not really, I just, hmm. well, the way I interpret it when you said analysis is, um, just a deeper engagement with the text itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I do feel similarly to Laura in that, I mean, when I give presentations and academic conferences and things, I often have to, yeah, like Laura, um, explain a bit more than if I'm talking about, I don't know, um, I don't know, Christopher Nolan cinema or something. Um, you, you know, those things you don't have to introduce to um, an audience, but with short films, you do. Um, but I don't see that as a problem, actually, because I, I, you know, I've been as somebody who researches, you know, experimental film and Asian experimental film. Even if I'm giving a conference, like a paper in a um, conference about experimental film, I end up having to, you know, um, give a bit more explanation than those who are presenting on European or American avant-garde film. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I do see it as a problem on, on the one hand, but I mean, it's just so part, so much part of what I have to do now that, you know, um, it's, it's just something I have to deal with. And yeah, for, for us to move on to that, I think it's not so much more of criticism about these films, but more visibility and accessibility for these films. And that goes from education to journals and magazines and everything like that. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you, Julian. Um, Laura? Um, I, I don't really feel like I have much to add to this question, to be honest. What Marina and, uh, and Julian said, um, 
uh, I think basically covers covers it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, I have another question. Uh, I also would like to re uh, remind uh, the audience that if you want, you can ask questions, and then I can then later on um, uh, ask them to our uh, guests. So. Um, I have a question which is a bit different. Um, in my opinion, many film critics hold selection committee roles in festivals, uh, especially in feature film ones. Um, apparently, uh, I guess that this is not the case in short film festivals, where critics are less present in committees, uh, while curators or film festival organizers are way more common members. Um, first of all, I would like to know if you agree with this idea um, and if so, why do you think this happens, um, Marina? I seriously have no idea. Although, you know, as we speak of it, there are actually a couple of film critics who do curate. I mean, you, you have Carmen Gray mm -hmm. and you have Pamela, uh, but I mean, uh, not many, yes, you're right. Mm, maybe because, uh, Programming in short films, as I said, um, in my opinion, is completely different. I mean, uh, competition programs and stuff like that is completely different from the classical big feature competitions. And there are many compromises made um, in this kind of commercial cinema dedicated filmmaking. And I think that, um, you know, in short film programming, what I experienced from the festivals, there is more dedication to the uh, very uh, explorative, um, kind of more um, more carefully curated content, which is braver in a way. That's my opinion. Maybe, maybe that's that's the reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Laura, what do you think? Well, I, I do have a hypothesis, uh, which uh, might be completely wrong, um, but um, it, it goes a bit back to what I said earlier about uh, this notion that um, many film critics uh, come from a kind of a classical cinema background and then also uh, are more into into the kind of narrative cinema that we are taught um, usually um, or predominantly I would say and that even the fact that we use the word curator in um, so heavily in uh, or we started using that word in maybe the past I don't know 10-15 years uh, kind of shows a proximity I would say of the short film sector to the art sector um, because it's it's clearly a um, a term that we have kind of transferred um, from museum studies into the film world, and uh, I would say that um, as I mentioned before, um, many of the people writing about short film um, do um, have an affinity for the art sector or even come from that, are also taught in art and not necessarily in cinema. So this is uh, basically my idea why that uh, could be. Thank you. And Julian? Um, yeah, I mean, hmm. can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, um, I think uh, in part, I think the whole idea of critics also being um, programmers in the current festival landscape is a um, basically a symptom of the situation right now, where I think film festivals um, and also magazines and outlets aren't paying their staff as much, uh, you know, properly enough to survive on. So people are basically wearing hats, um, different hats, and um, you know partially by choice, but I think mostly by necessity. Um, so I think, you know, the kind of hybrid critic programmer has come out of that as well. Um, saying that, I, I do think that, um, you know, more exciting kind of curating takes place, uh, at least in my eyes, in show film um, curating, because, um, I mean, for example, when I teach classes on film programming at uh, my university, I really, um, encourage uh, my students to try making a short film compilation program um, and, and this becomes a 
a way to um, explore the possibilities of film programming, uh, you know, putting different films together um, in different ways. Uh, you know, we, we, we know all the different um, things that go into uh, f- short film programming here, but it's, it's not something that you can do as much in uh, feature film programming. Often you're given one slot maybe, and then you fill that with one feature. Um, and, you know, as a young or up and coming programmer, you're um, probably not going to be able to organize a film series at a museum or a cinema institute, but you might be able to convince a independent cinema or a local cinema to present one evening of a short film program. So, yeah. Um, so uh, I do think, um, yeah, for me, as a, for me as a teacher, I engage. Sorry. <laughs> I love that part. So for me, I think, um, you know, uh, uh, that's what I see as the possibility of short film, that it's quite um, open and endless. And uh, I see, like Laura said, a lot of people who are more um, trained in engaging with uh, works that they don't immediately understand. Um, That happens more in, I think, art criticism and writing than perhaps the conventional film reviewing. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the affinity between like, let's say, as Laura said, the arts and, um, and short film programming and short film curating. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, okay. So, um, I have a question from, uh, Niels. Um, let me check. Okay. This one, um, uh, one could argue that written criticism is threatened by the binding, blindingly rapid rise of digital media. But for an art form such as the short film that is so embedded into the digital age, could this be uh, or become an advantage? Was it clear or do you have to read it again? Uh, Laura, what do you think? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say maybe you could read it again. Okay, so, I didn't sorry. get it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the question is, one could argue that written criticism is threatened by the bi- blindingly rapid rise of digital media. But for an art form such as the short film, that it, this is so embedded into the digital age, could this be a, or become an advantage? May I, may I maybe start? Yes, go on. I think, I think you know, that um, there was always this kind of outcry every time uh, it came to a certain change in the history of cinema and also in the history of film criticism. There was always an outcry. Oh, there is a crisis of film criticism. And there is a crisis in filmmaking. I think that this kind of uh, rapid digital whatever, you know, with bloggers and many people having their own opinions and thinking they can write about things, is both positive and negative because um, with now um, we have um, a much easier access to short films, for for instance. And um, luckily, luckily for us, there are not so many people who are writing about short films around in such a um, careless manner that they're doing about feature films and the rest of the cinema, if you know what I mean. Something that um, that hits actually in the cinemas that are shown in comp- big comp- competitions, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this means for the short film criticism, just something positive because, you know, first you have to develop the whole concept. You have to, you have to track the audience. You have to establish the dialogue with the audience. You have to establish the habit of people reading um, about short films and watching the short films. So I think that in this uh, sense, uh, this a rapid development means something good for the short film criticism. Yeah, that's what, what I um, would have said too, that I um, see it as a, um, as a positive sign in the sense of that I think, you know, criticism, if it's not just work, what uh, Marina mentioned, you know, that in the sense of you have to go review the newest Star Wars movie because you get paid okay. to do so, you know, that doesn't really exist in the in the in the short film sector. And I think it shouldn't uh, exist at all um, in criticism, because I think what good criticism comes 
from is a kind of dedication to the work and a kind of really sensual and intellectual pleasure that you actually take in engaging with a work of art. Um, so I actually would say that people who take the time to write about, uh, to sit down, watch something and then write about it and putting it online, that could, all, could only be positive. And then I still, uh, as an audience, can figure out who are the writers uh, that um, I would be interested in in the long term and all the others I simply don't have to read, like nobody can make me so. I would say it's it's a really positive thing. Um, Julian, do you have an idea? Yeah, I mean, I basically echo uh, what Marina and Laura have said already, but um, I think, um, you know, short film has this um, adaptability to the online environment that maybe feature film doesn't as much. Um, uh, for example, of course, you know, the best environment, even for a short film, is to you know, watch it in a cinema with great sound system, good projection, and that concentration, right? But, um, okay, when uh, I think the reality of uh, moving image media now is that it's, um, you know, with, through the digital evolution, we are able to watch films on our iPhone, our iPad, um, on the way to work, uh, during our lunch break, outside in the park, something like this. Um, but feature film is difficult. Um, feature film will struggle to hold that attention in those um, kind of small moments in your life, whereas short film maybe might uh, uh, be able to fill that gap. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking of more of a general level, not so much uh, as professionals working in short film or anything like that, but for general audiences, maybe that will become an attractive thing if they're um, made uh, aware of, of its existence. I think in part why TV series have become so popular in the last decade plus is um, because, you know, 50 minutes or even shorter ones, like from, you know, 25 minutes, it's just more manageable in this um, era uh, than a 90-minute plus film. Um, you know, when you read that book, 24-7 uh, by Jonathan Quarry, I think, um, it talks about how we're basically working all the time, 24-7, um, as freelancers or just even people working um, in general offices. Uh, you know, there's so little time that you can have for yourself, and maybe um, short film. Excuse me, keep putting the big wind on my pants here. <laughs> um, short film is able to uh, um, adapt to that new kind of era of our, um, yeah, basically new working life, where um, uh, you know people don't have as much time to dedicate to cinema going or cinema viewing even. Um, and also, you know, newspapers have had the excuse that, you know, print is limited and, you know, they can't dedicate an entire page on short films because that would just cost them too much. Whereas online is, you know, it's a different kind of space. It's more malleable. And, you know, I think outlets are able to give that space to short films if they wanted to. So our task, I think, is to encourage them to by, you know, clicking on those uh, reviews that are dealing with short films or, encouraging as festivals maybe we can write a co-written letter or something to these outlets um especially tax funded ones like you know sight and sound or something then you're mostly ignoring a whole um whole you know space of cinema and you know what you're what so many outlets are doing right now are just still regurgitations of press releases when you look at IndieWire and things like this uh, there's a lot of that and we can say push them to say hey like you know, you can contribute to film criticism in a different way. Maybe you can engage with short film and, um, uh, yeah, give it the attention that you're able to on the online space when you can't in print. Um, and, you know, for example, what was it? Date by Mark Jenkins, right? That was a big kind of sleeper hit in the UK. I'm, I'm sorry I keep referring to the UK. But, um, I'm half British and I don't, um, right now I'm reading a lot around there, I guess. But, um, uh, yeah, Bay was a, you know, indie hit in the UK. And, you know, this filmmaker has made many short films. And those, you know, perhaps if an outlet like Flight and Sound gave proper attention to short films, they would have seen this rising voice in British cinema, um, UK cinema, uh, earlier than um, when, you know, a festival picked it up. Uh, was it Berlin Forum, I think, picked it up and then it had its festival run and theatrical release after. Uh, film criticism is too often reliant on 
theatrical release and festivals. Like it should be doing its own research. Um, and, um, you know, they should be held accountable for that. Um, and I think one way of recognizing um, new voices is, uh, you know, paying attention to short films and filmmakers who don't have the budget and backing of studios or, you know, the production com- established production companies, uh, maybe they'll see the new voices before we all know it already. Mm. Okay. Um, I want to connect this to what is going to be the last question because we are running out of time, I would say. So um, it's a practical question since, uh, Julian, you already mentioned some outlets. Uh, this is very specific and it says uh, what platforms or magazines for short film criticism are there? And also it asks, how oh, are they being funded? Uh, which is also might be an also another uh, issue. Um, well, Marina, would you start? I think you know more than <laughs> anybody about that. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, well, there are not many outlets out there that are dedicated to short films. Let's be honest. I mean, there were attempts by Kinoscope and there was like something, um, you know, in Cineropa previously. You know, there there are like Asian movie pals actually is pretty much um, undiscri- indiscriminative um, in that terms, but they would just review anything. If it's manga, manga, if it's short, short, if it's feature, feature or whatever, it's a book. Um, I think there are just few of us, literally few. I know that there is one in Belgium, but it's in a language that I don't really understand or read. Um, of course, talking shorts. Um, and you know what we do is basically not just short films. We also write about documentary films, but it's just shorts and documentaries and experimental films. And we don't actually review any kind of classical feature films. So yeah, um, I don't know. Um, it, there is a huge gap out, out there, and I think that um, people actually do underestimate the general interest in things that are not out there on the market. I mean, also in terms of film criticism. And I actually, I'm quite pleasantly surprised by the comments of the readers who want to know where they can get a film. So it's just all these private messages that I get like in, in my in my inbox, but it kind of gives me hope that it really does something, you know? It, does really, um, you know, wakes interest and it does really make people to go and purchase a film, you know, but no, that there isn't much out there. Um, and um, Julian has addressed, uh, you know, that some shorts are being reviewed also in the daily newspapers, like in the Guardian, but it's just such shorts that are directed by a really big, big names, you know, it's, it's not like that mm-hmm. this newspapers would dedicate their time to a short by, um, you know, a short film director that has made a feature film and is generally known um, in the public. So, I mean, it's lots of work, but it's it's a hard work and it's a hard project. And I'm really happy that we're doing what we're doing. I think it should, it should expand and it'll be so exciting to have plenty, plenty of concurrents. Also like the, the academic uh, reviews and academic texts about short films. I mean, absolutely fabulous, but I think it's slowly going there because um, as Julian said, and also Laura, you know, people are really, uh, fed up with like particularly very long films they don't have time for that but it's 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 like a discovery uh you know um in, not not just in, in terms of you know we're saving time but it's something completely new and something completely original because you know short films has such a variety of very original works and like seriously not comparable to anything else you see there so I think it's slowly moving. Right now, we're not many, but I hope we're going to be, uh, at least that the quality is going to be uh, really good. <laughs> yeah. well, hopefully so. Um, Laura, do you want to add something on this? or? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Marina that it's uh, something's been stirring and going the past uh, five, ten years. There's a couple of um, very interesting publications in, in the academic context that um, have 
all been published quite recently within the past five years, I think. So it's slowly getting, um, you know, um, kind of highlighting um, this format of cinema um, to a kind of wider academic audience and then also film students, of course. I mean, um, I think that's really the point of why I think it's so important that we that we write about uh, short film more also in the academic context, because that's basically what the future students will uh, read as well. And then they become film critics, etc. I think it's really mm. vital um, that we start teaching short film more uh, in a in a academic context. Um, there is a um, couple of uh, magazines dedicated to short films as well. Uh, Bref, I think, is the most established one, but obviously you have to read French to to read that. Um, there is a uh, one academic journal, a peer-reviewed journal, um, edited by Richard Raskin. Um, mm -hmm. That's out there that uh, specifically focuses on on uh, short films and short film analysis. Um, just you know to add to whoever is interested uh, in uh, researching more about short film and short film criticism. That's uh, also a good point to start. Um, me personally, uh, I uh, quite like to follow the senses of cinema um, reviews on um, on short film festivals as well, which I think is also again another um, topic that we haven't even discussed. That we also don't get a lot of reviews uh, or in depth analysis of short film programming at festivals because we don't have the yeah the the journalists actually visiting. So that maybe just to add, I think uh, probably Julian can also add to the list. Yeah, Julian. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, for example, I mean, I just mentioned Sight and Sound, but the section Wide Angle often covers short film because it's it's a section where more experimental works are being discussed. Um, for example, Jatovia Gary's um, The Journey Document um, is, has a full page review by Matthew Barrington in the, I think, previous issue of Sight and Sound. Um, and that's actually available now on YouTube, thanks to the artists. So it's something that you can watch and engage with. Um, Cinemascope always uh, covers short film. I remember an issue um, that was published last year uh, with the, the cover film as MS Slavage 7, I think, uh, where, you know, filmmakers like um, James Ankin, it's Wilkins, Rana Kohlberger, Takashi Makino, these short, you know, people who work mainly in short film um, were being discussed at length in, in the pages of a print uh, magazine there. And then, of course, there's the um, art outlets such as our forum, our monthly art review, these, these platforms cover artists moving image more broadly, which includes short film. Um, so, yeah, and then I also just follow writers basically. Um, uh, where where they're writing, um, people from Erica Balson to you know Matt Turner, uh, Matthew Barrington I mentioned, Elena Gorfinkel. Uh, I I remember seeing this beautiful piece, uh, reading this beautiful piece by Dennis Lynn in Film Comment um, about looking back at the decade where he mentions um, you know short films have actually you know maybe been one of the most exciting. Uh, developments in recent cinema uh, in the sense that so many important and interesting films are just happens to be short films um so yeah full of writers and yes yeah, speaking going back to the canon actually um you know when when you look at uh, sight and sound for example's uh, year-end poll um you know most even the writers that to this to you know take part in this poll often write 10 feature films and then a list of short films that they also like. And I understand that because they want, you know, the feature films they support to go up in the, in the numbers so they have better visibility um, and all this. But um, it'd be great for something like that to, like Sign and Sound, to ask the writers to at least include one short film or, um, into their top 10. Um, uh, that would be uh, that would encourage more short film viewing, I think, among feature film critics and, you know, some other things like maybe film festivals who are providing, um, you know, 
hotel nights for film critics, uh, they can say, you know, you can have an extra night or, with a short film or something like, you know, if you write about a short film uh, or something like this. Um, and maybe short film uh, platforms, um, such as the ones that have been discussed, could reach out to people who aren't writing about short films more. Um, I often see, you know, the same names writing about short film, and that's understandable, but it would be great to, you know, reach out to these feature film critics who maybe just don't have the opportunity on, in the professional context to write about short film and give them that chance and opportunity. Um, and I think many, many of them will be up for that challenge. So, you know, I think maybe keeping short film on a separate island can be dangerous in the context of criticism or just be like an echo chamber speaking to the same crowd. And I think together we can find ways to reach the different audiences, readers, critics. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, the line I think dropped. Or Julian, are you there still? Yeah, yeah I'm still. Okay. I'm still here. It just got loud, and uh, I was kind of at the end, so I, I muted myself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Um... I think it's time to wrap up. And uh, first of all, we'd like to thank uh, all our guests uh, today, Marina, Julian, and Laura. Thank you so much for being part of this panel. Thank you for having us. Thanks. And this was thank uh, you. This was Let's Critical, and it was brought to you by Glasgow Show Film Festival and Showways Festival in Portland. The festivals continue until tomorrow online and likely here in Poznan, even in the real world. So uh, I hope you can, uh, you can enjoy the, the programs. And uh, I remember, I would like to remember everybody that you can find this recording of, of this panel on Tokyo Shorts under the B Show Now initiative. So thank you so much. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.